Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here. We're doing a Decision Maths A-Level uh, video and it's the fourth one on linear programming. So this video uh, is all about formulating a linear programming problem. Now we've had three videos before that are some of the skills we're going to need for this chapter. This is the first one where we're actually talking about what linear programming is. Now we're going to see examples of linear programming problems but in essence, a linear programming problem is where you want to maximize something like your profit or minimize something like your costs with certain restrictions um, that are in place. Like you might have restrictions on the number of hours that you can work or the number of raw materials you have. So that's the idea. Now to formulate a linear programming problem, there are three things you have to be able to do. You define what's called your decision variables. I'll talk about that via an example. You state your objective function, okay, which again I'll talk about that as an example. And lastly, you write your constraints. Now, just quickly before we do this, um, the objective function is the thing you're trying to maximize or minimize, usually profit if you're maximizing it or cost if you're minimizing it. And your constraints, your inequalities, they're the things that are, um, you've only got a finite amount of them. So they're the things that you need in order to make your profit. Right, let's look at an example that's the easiest way to do one. Right, here we go. So, Mrs. Cook is making cakes to sell to charity. She makes two types uh, of cake. She makes a fruit cake and a chocolate cake. Amongst other ingredients, each fruit cake, so every time she's got a fruit cake, she requires... Actually, what I might do is colour these in different colours. That would be useful. So she requires one egg, 250 grams of flour, and 200 grams of sugar. And she has she's making chocolate cake as well. And each chocolate cake requires two eggs, 250 grams of sugar and uh, of flour, and 300 grams of sugar. Now, Mrs. Cook has 36 eggs. She's got seven kilograms of flour and six kilograms of sugar. She, wish, she wishes to sell the fruit cakes for £3.50 and she wants to sell the chocolate cakes for £5. She wishes to maximise the money she makes from these sales. You uh, may assume she sells all she makes, formulate this problem. Okay, the first things first is we need to define our decision variables. Okay, so our decision variables are clearly going to be the number of fruit cakes we make and the number of chocolate cakes we make. Okay, because each time, they're the key things, because each time we make a fruitcake, we make some sales money if we sell it, and we also require some ingredients. So that's the thing that both our, um, obje our um, uh, ingredients depend on and our sales depend on. So there are decision variables. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define them. So we're going to let X and Y be the number of fruit and chocolate cakes made or sold, because we sell or we make, respectively. So we have defined um, our variables. Those are the things that will determine our profit and determine how much ingredients we use. Okay. Now we're going to state our objective function. Now the thing we're trying to maximize. Now we're trying to maximize the money she makes. Now each time she sells a fruitcake she makes £3.50. So therefore her uh, sales, you could call it sales for S, sales is going to be equal to £3.50 multiplied by the number of fruit cakes you make. So we can write that as 3.5 multiplied by x. So that's how much money she makes from fruit cakes. And from chocolate cakes, she makes a fiver each chocolate cake. So 5 multiplied by y. And s stands for um, sales here. So we're trying to maximize s, our sales, our money from sales. And that's equal to 3.5x. Uh, plus 5y. Now we need to write our constraints. Okay, now before we do that, let's just write down all the information in the quick table. So a fruit cake. So when we've got a fruit cake, 
and either and we've got a chocolate cake. Remember our fruit cakes are we use X and our chocolate cakes we're going to use Y. Now we know that we for a fruit cake we need we need eggs, so I'm going to write the title here eggs. We need one flour 250 and sugar 200. So flour 250 grams and sugar 200 grams. Now with chocolate cakes is two eggs 250 and 300. So two eggs 250 grams and 300 grams. Okay, now our constraints come in this section here. Um, she has 36 eggs, that's all the eggs she has. So her eggs must be less than 36. Uh, so we know that every time she makes a fruit cake, she uses one egg. So if she makes X fruit cakes, she'll do X multiplied by one. So for the number of eggs, we will have X. And for every time she makes a chocolate cake, she uses two eggs. So it will be plus two Y. So they are the total number of eggs we use. So one egg for each of these, one times X, plus uh, two eggs for each of these, plus two times Y. And that must be less than or equal to 38. She can't use more than 38 eggs. That's her, uh, Sorry, 36 eggs even. That's her maximum. Okay. Now the next one, what's our next constraint? She has seven kilograms of flour. Seven kilograms of flour. Now notice kilograms, which is 7,000 grams. So every fruit cake, it will be X times 250. So we can write that as 250X plus 250Y is going to be less than or equal to um, flour was 7 kilograms. So we'll write 7,000 like that. Okay. And the last one, um, she's got six kilograms of sugar. So every time she makes a fruit cake, she uses 200 grams. So 200X plus 300Y. So 200X plus 300Y must be less than or equal to 6,000. Okay, and the last constraint, we always write the, uh, the positive constraint. Obviously, she's got to make a positive uh, not, or, or zero number of fruit cakes. So X and Y have got to be bigger than or equal to zero. You can't have negative amounts of fruit cakes or chocolate cakes. Now, we just take a second to always try and simplify a constraint where possible. Now, we can't simplify this anymore, so we're going to keep this as x add 2y is less than or equal to 36. Now, this one, we could take a moment and divide everything through by 250, in which case we would get the following. We would get x add y must be less than or equal to, and we can get our calculator out, and we can do um, 7,000 divided by 250, and we're going to get ourselves 28, so 28. Much simpler version, so look for things we can divide both sides by. And we'll do this exactly the same thing here. Let's divide everything through by 100, is probably our best bet. So we'll divide through by 100 and get 2x, add 3y, must be less than or equal um, to 60. Okay, and we have x and y are bigger than or equal to zero. So there are constraints, that's our objective function, and we've uh, uh, stated it here. So we're just going to then state our problem. Our linear programming problem is going to be as follows. What we're trying to do is maximize um, s is equal to 3.5x plus, uh, what was it, 5y, subject to, and these are our constraints, subject to these uh, constraints here, x add 2y is less than or equal to 36, x add y is less than or equal to 28, 2x add 3y must be less than or equal to 60, and lastly, x and y is bigger than or equal to zero. And that's our linear programming problem here. So in an exam, we might be given a big paragraph like that. Our first stage would be to set up our linear programming problem. Future videos will show us how to solve these. Okay, so let's do another example. You may feel confident to have a go at the next one. Um, so you can pause the video. If not, work it through with me. So here's our next one. 
A bus company buys two types of diary to send to its customers. A desktop diary and a pocket diary. They will need to place a minimum order of 200 desktop and 80 pocket diaries. So the desktop diaries, they must have at least 200 ordered and they must have at least 80 pocket diaries ordered. There will need to be twice, at least twice as many pocket diaries as desktop diaries. They will need a total of at least 400 diaries. Each desktop diary costs six pounds. and each pocket diary costs three pounds. The company wishes to minimize the cost of buying diaries, formulate a linear programming problem. Okay, firstly, let's state um, our, looking up here, our decision variables. So why don't we let, everything depends on how many desktop diaries and pocket diaries we order. So why don't we let X and Y uh, be the number of desk top and pocket diaries ordered respectively okay so that's great so we've started we've done the first bit now let's state our objective function. We're trying to minimize something. So we're trying to minimize the cost. Now every time we buy a desktop diary it costs us six pounds. So if we buy X it will be six X. So we're minimizing our total cost which is six X and every time we buy a pocket diary uh, it costs us three pounds so we buy Y so it would be plus three Y. So we're minimizing six X plus three Y and subject to various constraints, so subject to. Now let's work through the constraints. They will need to place a minimum order of 200 desktops. So the desktop diaries, which are X, X must be bigger than or equal to 200. They will need to place a minimum order of 80 pocket diaries. So Y must be bigger than or equal to 80. Okay. Next one up here says at least twice as many pocket diaries as desktop diaries. Now the desktop diaries we said were X, okay, so this is X, and you want at least twice as many of these than those. So if this one is Y, you want your Y to be bigger than or equal to 2x. Okay, like that. You want the number of your pocket diaries to be at least equal to, so it must be equal to double the 2x, but bigger than or equal to. So you want y to be bigger than or equal to 2x. Right, what else do you want? You, you want a total of at least 400. So the total number of diaries is your desktops plus your pockets. So x plus y must be at least 400, so must be bigger than or equal to 400. And our non-negativity constraint, we usually say that X and Y must be bigger than or equal to zero. Now given X is bigger than 200 and Y is bigger than 80, we don't need to write that one down this time. It's clear that they're bigger than or equal to zero there. Okay? So we've now got ourselves our linear programming problem. So we're minimizing this, Subject to x bigger than two hundred, bigger than or equal to two hundred, y bigger than or equal to eighty, y bigger than or equal to two x, and x plus y bigger than or equal to four hundred. None of these could be simplified. Uh, there's no common factors, and so we're done. So that's the basic idea of formulating a linear programming problem. To uh, make sure you state um, your variables, make sure you state or what you're maximizing and min minimizing. This is called your objective function here. This here has got a name, it's called your objective function. And these here are called your constraints, which are given in terms of inequalities. So going back to the other one we did, 
Um, going back here, again looking down at the first example, uh, this here is called our objective function and these here are called our constraints and they're shown by um, inequalities. Remember to always put your non-negativity constraint unless um, it's, it, it's not needed um, because x and y are clearly bigger than or equal to zero. So that's it for this video. I'd encourage you to do the following extra work and I'm going to do another video on a slightly more complicated formulated linear programming problem next. So thanks for watching.